We have a new episode here for the Engine Performance Expo, and I am honored to say that I have some of the most knowledgeable guys in this particular discussion. I'd like to start right to my right first, yeah, self-introduction. Brian Thompson, lead applications engineer here at Brother Manufacturing. Keith Thornton with Automotive Specialist in Concord, North Carolina. Dan Bagley, I'm the technical sales engineer for Molly and Levi Engineering. And I am Randy Neal of CWT Industries, and we have a treat for you guys today because there's a giant opportunity for tooling to be developed. Or, let me rephrase that. That's now online and available that can fix some of the anomalies we have in establishing geometry to the block. Ryan, pick up on that. Yeah, I mean, you know, Randy, it's, it's the conversation today is, is it's always about data, and I think that's you know why I'm lucky enough to be on this panel is is working at Rotler and, and working in this industry with the machine tool. Uh, you know, it always comes down to the fixturing. Rotler's success, Rotler's brand is built on well, anyone can go out and buy a CNC machine, but when you're doing engines to buy this equipment and buy into this industry and, and what you're investing in is a solution for specific applications. And and we're always looking at it. It's my job here is to go out, talk with gentlemen such as Keith, such as, your, as Randy, as Dan, and we go out and say, well, what are the things that aren't quite right with these engines and how can we correct that? And no matter what we do with any fixture we develop, we have to make assumptions. And, and we're assuming when we, you know, like we have back here in our fourth axis, and we're picking up the main and we're picking up the cam, we're assuming those things are in line. And a lot of times we don't even think about it. We throw a block in and we say, yeah, that's a round straight hole, and both ends, one and five are in line, and the cam should be, you know, straight up and parallel. But the reality is, and as Keith can elaborate on, it's not. So if it's not, and we're just machining things away, and we're not correcting those things, and we're living on those assumptions of having been thinking it, are we putting the best product forward? We have modern equipment with CNC machines and probes and data collection, and we can look and truly, truly paint a very accurate picture of blueprint blocks, but how do we go about that process, and what is the process? Actually, I have a key point here, because Porsche, with technology that we now have behind us, it has gotten to the point where machines actually almost have the ability to take the variability of what our beliefs are versus what we can now measure and predict at a bit of geometry. Knowing that we have the cam board and the main board working in harmony, in absolute parallel, that assumption before, we had different types of tooling out there for the best guess, and that's where we have changed this. Keith, for a second, pick on that for me. Well, let's just assume we're talking about a small block Chevy to start with, and it's with a flat all engine. We've seen it on the small blocks where back in a number of years ago, decades ago actually, where with the crude equipment we had, let's say we we uh, put steel caps on the block and we align board it. We know that was all center line and all good. And then we put it in our fixture to check the cam alignment, and we found some horrible discrepancies in the cam alignment, both side to side and vertically. It was hard to correct with the equipment we had then. You know, we did it with a horizontal line board machine, and very confusing, very tedious work, but we were able to take as much as uh, some of them close to 30,000 out of line in both directions. So you were correcting alignment in two different directions. But, uh, and we did it by using oversized camera. We started with uh, like a, with the big block Chevy there in it and having a cam made for that. And then that evolved quickly in the use of 50 millimeter roller on the upper level engines, uh, which kept uh, cam bearing wear load on the cold starts and things of that nature. But uh, our performance and longevity everything seemed to increase with those modifications. Now, now that we have the F-69, uh, and, you know, we, we assume, just like Ryan said, that everything's in line. And it was also mentioned earlier to me that should we line up off of the cam boards to the crank board and then do the lift, for sure, that will make the lifter Right, but it's still out of whack. Right. So 
my theory is we need to correct that cam prior to doing anything else. That way when we put it in this machine, we'll know we've got a solid foundation and everything is based straight up on center lines. We got that geometry dialed in. So the way this machine will do it, we can if we note the center of the center, I mean, that's easy to find out what it's supposed to be. So we take the clock in here after we do the main tunnel, set it up, setting up off the mains. We can go this way and this way, for it for whatever size bearing we want, and bingo, you put it back in the machine and everything else is you know it's gonna be a lift angle, deck angle. Yeah, and I think, you know, Keith, when I was out at, at your place recently, and we were experimenting with some of this stuff. Yes. And you hit on a good point, is, is, and I agree with you. I mean, you know, I look in, in some of the community, working with the picturing, what do we have, what's the process, that also makes sense, because at the end of the day, you got to find a way to be efficient and make money. I mean, that's what we're in it for. I think you're, you're making a good product, you're making money. Anyway, doing the, you know, with the next 69, being able to line for get that crank line first. And we know that that's our good data. And then when we go to do that cam tunnel, we can stand this block on that, use that, that machine surface that is that main line now. And, and we talked about this, is we can hit the bell house. Right? We can shoot the cam tunnel. So now we have uh, our, our main line and our cam line parallelly aligned in both directions. We don't have that 25, which is crazy. You'd have to take out so much material to correct that. Yeah. And, in, and now you have a perpendicular bell house. So I have to think that for me, from the engine, I go, if your cam's in line, and if your crank's in line, you got all the power going out through the crank, and you're perpendicular to the bell housing, right? all the power's going to go out through that. That's got to be, you know, for the three points to hit first, that's got to be probably, under, you're setting that foundation for everything you do after, like you said. Now we can put it in, especially you know, going back to using the fixtures, our fourth axis, we're centering on the main and the cam and the bell housing. So if I've done the main and the cam and the bell housing first, I already can go to the That's got to give you the best result for your cylinder board, your lifter board, your stacks, all of it at that point. I mean, you truly created a datum and then built off that datum to your partner. All right, let me kick it a little bit different here. Everything that we do was with the goal of making his bearings work. If the bearing, in other words, the geometry, the fit, the alignment, if that is not correct, what happens to your bearings? Yeah, I mean, parts don't buy. When you, when you read parts after the engine comes apart, they, they don't buy. They're telling the story, you know, misalignment. You know, if, you, if your bearings misalign with the shaft, you, you reduce the oil film thickness in there. When you reduce the oil film thickness, you have less margin. Less margin, the crankshaft's going to hit the bearing. Frictional temperature starts melting the bearing, and the next thing you know, now we created a bearing failure due to misalignment. Something that we, we see, but they're, they're only as good as the, the lowest melting point of the overlay, and friction kills them. So, misalignment is really extremely important, is it not? Yeah, we, I mean, when you work on bearing, you, you want you're setting X amount of clearance for the shaft to the, the bearing, and then if you move it, now all of a sudden that clearance is not there when you thought it was. And you're, you're not getting oil film around there, and you definitely have a problem. So sometimes the product that, that you're seeing unusual wear, it's not the failure of a normal cycle of events, it's because of lime and geometry issues. Absolutely. I mean, okay. equipment like this is helping put everything back where it needs to be, and the engines that we're building today are not the engines we used to build, and they're less forgiving, oil they're getting thinner. So everything you're doing now is not critical for today and what we're doing. Sure. We've arrived at a state now because of technology. Robert has just one of the key components here. And then we have the talent with someone of the history of engine building of Keith. He's sitting there tuning us up, so to speak, and advising and directing. I got to tell you, Keith, though, but is it just a parallel or what about the relationship to the lifter force and the angularity and the straightness of that? That's, well, there's nothing that's not critical. Okay. Fair enough. There you I mean, go. You know, I mean, there's nothing that we, I, I, I don't mean there's nothing that we can't improve on, but, but we can correct it what it's supposed to be. But I, let me back up just a bit, uh, telling you, you know, the extreme of something. But we had some issues. Anybody's ever, like, a dry sun pump, you 
put that pump on there and the belt walks off. Mm-hmm. The pump's a little crooked. Mm-hmm. But we've seen that on a belt drive on the camp. Why okay. is that happening? And well, it, it happened, we've seen it both ways, where it walked off the front and where it walked off the back and actually ripped the block. Really? Well, what's causing that? And it was that vertical alignment yeah. there. There we are. Right. So that, that kind of helped start, you know, what's going on here? fixture to, to try to, you know, in a crude way to find what was going on there. But, yeah, the the, uh, the lifter placement, I mean, gosh, going back to the, where we had to run flat tappets, oh, you know, your fore and aft alignment, you know, because that lifter's got to be so much off center of the load, sure. and, uh, and, you know, and like on a forward, you know, the it's offset opposite on each bank. And they do that to keep the camp the camp centered up in there. Yeah, so uh, but I don't know, it's just like a partner using a plumb bob. To me, you know, you use that plumb bob in the front and rear and you get everything dialed in and you go from there. Okay. So let me ask this, I'm putting this in summary. With your history of building, all the things you used to do, knowing all these things. Would you go back from where you are now? Boy, it'd be hard. Can, can we go back without an iPhone? Yeah, I could do that. Uh, I, I wouldn't want to go back with the, without this. Nice. Technology is your friend. We now have the tooling. Remember the $6 million man? We now have this. Well, here we are, and this is the money maker. This is the one thing that pushes you to the next level in your in your building. What a day, what a day, what a day. But yeah, my brain, my brain is swollen. I've learned so much today. He told us, don't start cars. We are not going to listen.